What's going on YouTube? It's Robert Hall and in today's video I want to answer a speed light question that I see all the time. My channel is sponsored by Adorama, which buys me the time to create videos without the influence from any specific camera brand. I personally shop at Adorama for their great deals on a wide selection of products, as well as their support of those products down the road. So if you end up enjoying this video and you're interested in any of the products discussed, please use the links in the description below. So a lot of times in these groups of off-camera flash users, I see people ask the question, why is my flash stuck at 14 millimeters. So I figured today I would answer that question as well as discuss the whole zoom function of the flash, how it's designed to function, and how you can better understand it so that you can get the results that you want. Now, if you came here just for the 14 millimeter question, I wanna answer that straight away. So the short of it is the reason that your flash is stuck at 14 millimeters, if you can see right now, this flash is at 24 millimeters, but as soon as I pull out this on top, it switches to 14 millimeters. So the reason that your speed light is stuck at 14 millimeters or maybe 10 millimeters if you're using a flash that is designed for an APS-C system like this V350F for Fuji cameras, the reason it's stuck there is because you have the wide angle diffuser card up. When this wide angle diffuser and bounce card are up, you are telling your flash that you're trying to get it to bounce. The whole point of this wide angle diffuser up here is so that your light goes in as wide of a pattern as possible. So actually when you flip this wide angle diffuser up, your flash is still at 24 millimeters, but because this is on, it just shows you 14 millimeters because it's basically simulating what this wide angle diffuser does, which is just diffuses the light and casts an even wider pattern than 14 millimeters. So it doesn't matter what lens you have on, it doesn't matter whether the flash is pointed forward or the flash is pointed straight up, no matter what, if this wide angle diffuser card is out at all, it's going to be stuck at 14 millimeters. And so a lot of people get confused because their wide angle diffuser is somewhere like this, where it's not out covering the Fresnel lens, but it's not pushed all the way down either. So right now, we are still stuck at 14 millimeters but just that little gentle push, we'll put it back to 24 millimeters. Now, every speed light that I've ever used, whether it's a Nikon branded flash, like a SB910 or an SB800, or a young Nuo flash, like a YN565, or these Godox and Flashpoint flashes, they all function the same way with their zoom function. The whole purpose of the zoom function is so that you have control of how narrow or wide the beam of light coming from the Fresnel head is. The more you increase the zoom, the more the zoom head is actually getting further away from the Fresnel head, thus projecting it into a tighter pattern. And most flashes have a range of like 24 millimeters as their wide setting up to like 105 millimeters, all the way up to I've seen like 200 millimeters, which is how high the V860 version two will get. And on APS-C, it's the identical concept, except you're just going to have focal lengths that are designed to match up with the focal length of APS-C lenses. So. On this one, the widest setting is 18 millimeters because it's designed for smaller sensor cameras like the Fuji series. And when we open it up, this one's actually at 12 millimeters. And the highest zoom range on it is 69 millimeters, which is roughly equivalent to a 100 millimeter spread on a flash designed for a full frame camera. Now let's talk about auto for a moment. You can see right here that there is an A next to the zoom right here. Let me go grab a, sh a camera to show you what's gonna happen. So I have the flash in auto and I was actually mistaken. The widest zoom range on the V860 version two is actually 20 millimeters without having the ultra wide angle diffuser up. We're at 20 millimeters and right now the camera is off. I'm going to zoom my lens to 70 millimeters. This is a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. And note, I have the lens pointed straight as if I were gonna use this on camera and just blast a subject with it. This is basically the most primitive design of the zoom function for those using it straight on. As soon as I flick my camera on, you hear that little zoom? It is now automatically at 70 millimeters. And that's because what the zoom head is trying to do is narrow the beam so that it matches with your focal length. 
Because you can imagine, if we were at 24 millimeter zoom here and 70 millimeter zoom here, we're throwing all this light out to the side of the frame that the camera isn't even going to see. So when our speed light is in auto, it's automatically going to compensate for the focal length of the lens. As we zoom in and out, it's going to zoom in and out to match that focal length. Now, an interesting thing here is that as soon as I flip it to the top, as if I were going to bounce light off of some interior ceiling, you can see that the millimeters disappear. But, it's still zooming in and out. So I could be wrong here. I'm going from memory from using flashes five years ago that I haven't touched since, but I think different speed lights tend to behave differently here. So you might want to look at how yours specifically behaves. I can visually see looking down into my flash head that even though it's flipped straight up, this is still moving according to the focal length because we're in auto. But I do believe that there are speed lights out there that will just fire at their widest setting. But regardless, on every speed light, as soon as we bring this wide angle diffuser up, it's gonna go back to 14 millimeters because it assumes that since I have this wide angle diffuser up, I want this to cover as wide of an area as possible, which is a pretty safe assumption considering when you're bouncing light, you probably want it to spread as much as possible. But you don't have to. If I get out of auto and I go into manual, which on the V860, all you have to do is hit the zoom function and start moving it, then I can choose whatever zoom amount that I want. So now that it's pointed straight up, I can go all the way down to 24 or all the way up to 200, even though I don't even have a 200 millimeter lens on. And what this is allowing me to do is it's giving me the flexibility to control the area that I want my flash to fire. So say I'm at a venue that is just really high ceilings or the wall is really far away and I want to bounce my light, but bouncing at 24 millimeters just throws light everywhere or 14 millimeters. It's throwing light everywhere and that's not exactly what I want. Well, you can take control of that by zooming your flash head to the maximum amount so that as it travels across that distance, it's bouncing over a smaller area. And the zoom function is also really handy when you're using the flash off camera because you can control how narrow or how wide it is, which interacts differently with every modifier that you put it in. So because I don't rely on speed lights very often, this is the speed light that I tend to carry around in my bag. This is the V350 or lithium ion version for the lithium ion version of the mini speed light designed for Sony. Now this one goes anywhere from 24 millimeters all the way up to 105 millimeters. And one of my favorite light shaping tools, especially for a small portable speed light is the MagMod MagGrid. The mag grid just simply reduces the amount of spill by restricting the beams of light that pass through. And you may think if you wanna restrict your light more, cover a less wide of an area, you could just keep on adding mag grips, as many as you need until you get the results that you want. But you can also start with one and then just increase your zoom range because as you increase your zoom range, you're using less of the front of the Fresnel head and therefore you're gonna have a tighter beam of light come out of it. So you don't necessarily have to have four of these to accomplish slightly narrow results. You can simply increase your zoom range and get a lot of the effect that you would normally get from increasing or adding grids. Okay, so to summarize, the whole purpose of the zoom function is to increase or decrease the width of the beam of light that comes from your speed light. And the auto function is designed to automatically compensate for your focal length. If you're locked at a specific number, that just means gotta put the wide angle diffuser down. And the zoom function is a great tool for controlling the width of your light creatively off camera as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and until next time, keep on shooting.